Hello, today we're going to talk about simplified Kafka connection management for Node.js. I'm Michael Dawson, an active member of the Node community and the Node.js lead for Red Hat and IBM. So, the first question is, what do I need to connect to Kafka? So I end up needing one or more URLs that point me to the Kafka cluster. I need information that tell me what kind of connection am I making. Am I using SSL? Um, or the different options about how I'm going to connect. And then I'm going to need some sort of user ID and some sort of user secret. And of course, that user ID and user secret, I need to make sure that I handle that so that it's not disclosed to people that I don't want to. Because I want to make sure, of course, that only the right people can actually connect to my Kafka cluster. What does that actually look like? This is uh, you know, an example of some of the information that you can use to connect to one of Red Hat's uh, Kafka connections. In this case, it's telling me that I'm using the, the, SASL, uh, the SASL mechanism is, is type plain, so that tells me how I'm connecting. The client ID and client secret are the information that let me connect. And then the bootstrap server are the, is the URLs that actually let me connect to the, the server itself. Now, for Node, there's two leading Kafka clients, and uh, unlike some other languages, um, you know, each of the packages has their own APIs and their own way of connecting. So if you look, I have the two examples of the code to connect with uh, Kafka.js and Node RD Kafka. You can use, uh, in this case, I've used the same environment variables, but the way you pass them to the client actually ends up being different. And that turns out to be, you know, if I wanted to change from one client to the other, that's a little bit more work than I need to do. And if I'm worrying about how I get the, the credentials and everything into the environment, that can cause some extra complications. Uh, in terms of choosing between the clients, if you want some recommendations or suggestions, you can take a look at the reference, the Node.js reference architecture. There's some discussions of the clients of one, why you might want to use one or one or the other. Now, in that example code I showed, we were configuring through the environment, and that was setting some environment variables. Um, that's not necessarily the most secure thing, um, because if I actually go, for example, if I go into an OpenShift console, I can actually fairly easily get to and inspect the environment variables, assuming I have access to that environment. But uh, you know, often more people than you would think have access to a particular environment in terms of being able to dump the environment, or even if, say, you're, you're generating um, uh, core dumps that you want to investigate a problem and you want to share that. Um, so generally, it's uh, it's best practice to to try and avoid using environment variables if you if you can. There are some things like the .n npm package that help make you do it. Uh, add inject things um, into the environment of the running node process versus the overall environment that make it a little bit better. But really, we'd like to avoid that um, if we can. The good thing is, in for Kubernetes, uh, people have already thought about this, not just for Kafka, but for all sorts of different cases where really what you'd like to do is to map this information into and make it available to uh, you know, containers running in a Kubernetes environment in a way that's not just injecting them as environment variables. And what's been standardized through this spec, uh, Kubernetes spec, the K8S service binding spec, is to map them in through a set of directories and files that you can read in your, you know, you can read once they're mapped into a container. They basically, um, you know, are mapped under a service binding root, and that one environment variable is added to your environment. So that's how you figure out where the, the top of the, the tree is. Um, and then you can go in there and get the information which you can see before the things like the password, the bootstrap servers, the passwords, the provider, SASL mechanism, and all that kind of information. Now, that is good, but now you've got to you know, write some code that's going to read those files, pull all the information together, figure out the service bindings. Um, you know, why would I want to have to do that for every application I deploy? The, the answer is you don't. And uh, the good news is, is we've put together this module called Coop Service Bindings. And it does actually a number of things in addition to reading those files. So it will find if they are uh, service bindings that have been mapped in um, to the environment based on the service bindings root environment variable. Um, it'll then read that data in, but as I showed you before, because there's different clients, uh, you're actually going to want that data in a different format depending on the client you're using. So it actually also is aware of the different clients. It knows the Kafka JS client, it knows the RJF client, and it knows how to convert the data that's read from those service binding files into the format which is specific to that library that you want to use it for. Um, and so that makes it a lot easier to use um, 
service binding. So in, in fact, you end up with code that looks something like this, which basically, you know, you require the module, you can say get binding. Of course, the error handling always uh, tends to be a little bit more of the work, but in this case, I've admitted that. And in this case, I'm just, you know, asking for the service bindings for the Kafka client, for Kafka client, because we, we do think this will be useful outside of Kafka. I'm telling it my client is Kafka JS, and it gives me back an object that I can use directly with um, the Kafka JS APIs to create the, the, the instances and pass the, 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 the credentials. Similarly, you could pass, do, write the exact same code uh, with the Node RD Kafka client, but just tell it that you're using the Node RD Kafka client and it would pass you back an object with things in the right format there. So let's see this in action. Uh, I've pre-created uh, in a um, OpenShift cluster, which is available. You can actually use it. There's a sandbox where you can get an OpenShift cluster that you can use without having to set everything up. I've pre-done that, and I've connected my um, a Kafka instance. There's also a, a Kafka uh, service that you can you can get and connect into your applications. And so I've mapped that into to my namespace there, which you can see as the uh, Node.js uh, Node Kafka instance. I also pre-deployed an application, um, which uh, uses code similar to what I showed, be, showed you before, and I'll, I'll give you links to that to that example later. Um, but you know, if we look at, if we look at that, oops, look at there. I look at the logs. We'll see that currently um, it's basically throwing errors, and that's throwing errors because the code says if there's service bindings, use those service bindings. Otherwise, I'm going to use a default, um, you know. Uh, a Kafka instance, which has been installed locally, and if it's there, it'll work. Otherwise, it doesn't; it can't connect it, and we get these error messages. And what I really wanted to show you is that the, the cool thing about the service bindings is not only that there's that standard way of doing it, but that there's the infrastructure in Kubernetes environments that basically lets you make it so you don't have to necessarily manage that yourself. You don't have to set those environment variables. I've mapped in that Kafka instance to my um, my environment, and that can be done through some some applying some YAML, and you could have, say, the administrators do that for you. And then all I need to do is I need to drag, oops, let's see if I can do that, drag a link, which basically says create, create a binding connector, and that will connect my application to that Kafka instance. And that, you know, having done that, the service binding, um, which is installed in the environment, will automatically map those credentials in. The code, because it's using kube service bindings, will automatically recognize that it's there, pick it up, convert it into the format that the, the code needs for the particular client. And now if I connect in and I look at the logs for that application, I can see that it's connected to the back end uh, Kubernetes, uh, uh, sorry, Kafka client, and is happily publishing away, um, you know, to the topic that was that was created. So what I think is really cool about this is, you know, as a developer, I can connect to Kafka, I write my code, I don't even really need to know about what the format and you know how the credentials are going to be given to me, or the format they need to be for my particular client. Um, and I can write that code, I can check it into to GitHub repo because there's nothing sensitive there. And then on the deployment side, I, if I'm using the UI, I can simply drag a line across in the topology um, to, to you know, basically get that connection. And I could look at this and say, okay, well, let's take a look at what that uh, service binding is. I can see that it's like my producer backend application has been connected to my node or JS Kafka. So really it's simplified the, the, what I have to do to get connected to a, a Kafka connection. Okay, get a Kafka connection connected uh, to the backend server with Node.js. Uh, so I don't want to take too much of your time today, so I'm going to leave it at that, but I'm going to leave you with some really some useful links if you want to dive deeper. We have the reactive example that I was using where you can go and see we have a producer consumer and it connects to Kafka. Uh, there's the links to try Kafka where you can get a Kafka instance that you can use. Uh, the the Node refer, Node.js reference architecture, which I mentioned, where if you want to read about um, some of the different modules and stuff that our teams have had success with, um, you can go about read that. There's a great blog post that goes into a little bit more detail on connecting applications with uh, service bindings. Um, and it'll show you doing those kinds of connections. Of course, you can do them also by applying YAMLs and from the command line and all that versus the UI. You can, so it, it actually shows you how to do some of that, which is pretty cool as well. Um, the link to the Coop service bindings module itself, which you might want to take a look at. And then finally, if you just want to know, you know what we're up to at Red Hat in terms of Node.js and, and all the different things that we're, we're 
sort of the, the quick starts and guides that we're putting together, you can go to the Node.js topics on developers.redhat.com. So thank you very much for your time, and we hope to see you in another installment of one of our videos.